Hey guys and welcome back to another video and finally we have the long awaited and long anticipated review of the Doctor Who action figure sets for 2022. Now some of you guys may have been a bit disappointed that I never did reviews for wave one of this year and that's because I thought you know what by the time I got the opportunity to actually sit down and make a review Wave 2 was just around the corner, so I thought, why not film them all in one go and have one big video for you guys to enjoy? So I hope you all enjoy this video, and without any further ado, let's get straight on into the figures. So before we start, I just thought we'd get the packaging out the way. So for the two three-packs and all four of the three-packs available in this wave, you do have the standard window box, which we've seen many, many times before. You have a slight view at the top, slight view at the side, the usual insignia, limited edition sticker, the three figures fully visible in the front window, the TARDIS design on the side, some stuff on the back. You can pause this video if you want to read both of them. So exactly Exactly the same as what we've seen before, nothing really special. With all of the history of the Dalek sets, however, we are treated to this god-awful, environmentally friendly packaging, which basically means that the packaging is cheap, tatty, and the figures can be easily damaged. The Daleks are protected by a very thin sheet of vacuumed plastic, which is designed to go practically skin tight to the figures not really giving them much maneuver to breathe at all and also causing potential breakage to the figures for example one of my daleks does have a bent eye stalk because of this which is really really irritating and upon removing the figures from the packaging you will clearly see that there is practically nothing holding on this top piece except for here once you have torn the plastic, it cannot be reattached. But unfortunately, the biggest, biggest problem with this new packaging is we no longer have those really nice backdrops. However, there is one set in this entire wave that actually does have this backdrop. And that is the creation of the Dalek set. So this is everything that we're used to. We have the full window display, which you can very nicely see Davros and the Dalek packaged in there. Inside we have this very nice picture of the uh, sort of trenches on Scaro where we first see Davros. But I'll get on to all of that when actually reviewing this set. So yeah, I just don't really understand. Why is it that this set gets to keep this awesome new packaging? And... The Dalek sets have to deal with this crap. So I really, really don't understand. But look, I've got the Daleks, so I'm happy. But I can tell you exactly what I'll be doing with this packaging. In fact, better yet, I'm going to show you. Okay guys, so starting off appropriately enough with the 8th Doctor set, here we have the only 3 pack of Wave 1 that I've decided to get. I will pick up the 10th Doctor pack at some point, but it'll probably be next year, or even the year after when it's gone right the way down to like £5 or less, because I am not paying £22 for 3, well 2 standard 10th Doctors and a weird 10th Doctor variant that never actually appeared in the show. It just isn't happening but anyway this set i have to say i am very 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 happy to get and i will explain why in just a moment but included in this set is the tv movie eighth doctor the dark eyes big finish eighth doctor and the eighth doctor as appeared in the anniversary short episode the night of the doctor really really awesome god paul mcgann needs to get his own spin-off it needs to happen we all know it so First impressions, you might think that this is really just repaint. Sim would be, well, you'd be right, that's exactly what it is. But as someone who never got to own this figure, this set is still a must have for me. And I have to say, uh, considering that I don't own him, I still think the price of £22 is very, very reasonable. But let's get into the figures and we'll take a look at them individually. Okay, so starting off with the 8th Doctor from the TV movie. Now, this figure was originally released in the 11 Doctor set. In fact, we'll just bring in that original figure here so you can see a nice comparison between the two. And as you can see, for the most part, they are pretty much the same. However, 
the paint has been tweaked here and there just to give the figure a bit more of an upgrade. Now, I never got the chance to own the 8th Doctor and Alpha Dalek set, but what I can say is that the way the face has been painted on this figure does resemble very much the 8th Doctor that came in that set, and I have to say it's a huge improvement because of it. It's not that I never liked the paint on this figure, but the paint seems almost... it gives him this very dead kind of look, which I'm not a big fan of. What they've definitely done here is highlight the pink around his eyes. You can definitely see that there is more shadowing to his face, and also they have given him the correct hair colour, whereas on the original figure it is a lot darker. In fact, it's practically black, which is something that I've never really liked. But the big difference is the colour of the cravat and the waistcoat. Now, on the original figure's waistcoat, it does come included with those strange shapes and patterns, which is more accurate to the film. However, on this version, they've decided to go with this very nice metallic bronze sort of colour. And with the cravat, they've gone for a sort of off metallic gold and I have to say it's really really nice the light just catches it really well another nice inclusion is the speckled trousers which was previously done on the fourth doctor figures which is a nice upgrade to that original version which is just a flat gray he has brown shoes whereas the original has black shiny shoes and his coat is ever so slightly lighter. I will say the originals does seem to be more of a green, whereas this one seems to be more very greyish green to my eyes. And obviously another big noticeable difference is the shiny front of the, of the um, I don't know really what, what to call them, but uh, this, this part of the collar here is very shiny and also the buttons, whereas on the original it's this strange red colour which I don't think was accurate at all. I'm not really sure why that happened. So honestly, both versions of this figure are nice, but I would have to give it to this new version. I love the lighter colour schemes. I love the metallic bright colours on the waistcoat and the cravat. It just makes them stand out so much more. So which one is more accurate? In terms of costume, as I said, the waistcoat here and the trousers are grey. Here, they're more of a beigeish brown on the new one. But they are speckled, and like I say, those lightened colours just really give the edge to this figure, in my opinion. So next up, we have the 8th Doctor from Dark Eyes. Now, I think this is the figure where a lot of people tend to eye-roll, because we literally got this figure about two years ago, twice. We had it first in the 2019 release, and then we had it re-released again in 2020 in a Dr. Dalek 2-pack with the Dalek Interrogator Prime. So getting this figure a third time must have really caused a bit of a stir with a lot of people, including myself. However, this figure does have a lot of improvements, and I think most of you will have already spotted the most notable one. So let's bring in the original figure. Now... I am just going to say right now that I do prefer the jacket and the trousers and the shoes on the original. As you can see, they are much, much lighter than our new updated counterpart. And I like the lighter jacket because I think the darker jacket just gets too close to the Ninth Doctor for my liking, especially when you put the figures side by side. I also do happen to prefer the gold buttons, I just think they stand out a little bit more, although unfortunately there has been a bit of paint bleed on mine, but I think where this new figure really stands out is in the face. I mean, just look at the difference. This paint is very animated and very cartoony, and I absolutely hate the eyes. They've just been given this very kind of, you know, it's just a blue dot. There's nothing really else there. Very cartoony, although it does look okay. I mean, you can still see the sculpt. It looks a lot like Paul McGann. But then you take a look at this new version, and you just see all of the attention to detail. You've got the white in the eyes, you've got the black pupils, you've even got a very noticeable wash on his hair, which is nice. It just highlights the details so much more. 
and it makes the sculpt look so much better. And for some reason on my original, the paint started to chip off just there. I'm not really sure what that's about. But the big selling point for many people is the inclusion of the satchel. And this satchel can be removed and put on however you like. Now, this originally came with a primeval figure. And I remember when this came out, a lot of pe when this figure came out, a lot of people flooded to eBay to try and get this. And it was going for ridiculous prices. In fact, I think the satchel was more value than the primeval figure it came with. So as you can see, it's very, very good sculpting. It's all been sculpted in one color. There is no wash to it, despite what some people have said it is just one solid color but because of the sculpting it's got quite some good shadow in there uh, yeah and it's also got this kind of dented in bit so it sits over the figure really nicely and to put it on you just raise the arm tuck it over the head and pop the arm back down and there you are you have a definitive Dark Eyes 8th Doctor. So while I did really like this figure at the time, I have to say when compared to the face paint and the inclusion of this, of the satchel on this figure, this one is the definitive one to get, even though personally I do prefer the lighter jacket. So last but ever so not least, we have the 8th Doctor from the Night of the Doctor. Now this is the figure that I was picking this set up for because, like I say, I missed out on both versions of this figure originally. The original release and the version that came in the 13th Doctor set. So I was very, very happy to have this. And yes, it looks amazing. I think the likeness to McGann is very, very good. It's got a nice wash in the hair. It's got great detail on the face. I love the gold metallic sort of thing on the waistcoat all down there you've got the chain you've got a nice dark wash on his trousers and the belt and all of the details very clearly highlighted here you've got this really nice green green coat it does appear to be a sort of bluish color in this lighting sorry about that but yeah it really does look as though he has been through the time war the scarf is really nice and what's really great about this figure is he does have the t-ball joints so you can bring his arms out to the side he has lots of really good articulation unfortunately his legs are a bit wonky and that's something i've noticed on a lot of the figure releases this year which i'll get onto a bit later on so yeah unfortunately quality control has been a bit thing there but it's all about looks with this guy and i absolutely love the look of him so brilliant brilliant figure as i said i don't really have anything to compare him to because i don't have the original versions but if you're like me and you've missed out on that original this set is a must get so in terms of articulation for the figures, both the TV movie 8th Doctor and the Dark Eyes 8th Doctor can do full 360 at the shoulders, full 360 at the biceps, 90 degree bend at the shoulder, at the elbows, I do apologise, 90 degree bend at the elbows, full rotation at the hand, side to side on the head, the legs can kick out 90 degrees, you can rotate the legs at the top, you've also got a 90 degree bend at the knee, so the articulation is exactly the same for the two of them, however on this version of the 8th Doctor you have the added bonus of bringing the arms out to 90 degrees due to the T-ball joint, so really really good extra bit of articulation there. So overall, I really, really like this set. Honestly, in total, I would give it, ironically enough, an 8 out of 10. It's a really good set for me because it does enable me to get this guy as well as two highly improved versions of the original 8th Doctor figures, and I am a huge fan of the 8th Doctor. The only thing that would have made this a solid 9 out of 10 would be if these figures came with their sonic screwdrivers, which sadly they don't. Okay, so next up is the much-anticipated History of the Dalek set. I don't even know because I can't keep track of the numbers anymore, so I'm just going to call it the Planet of the Dalek set. And included in this set is a completely translucent Dalek, which is absolutely awesome, and the long-awaited re-release of the Planet of the Dalek Supreme. So let's get straight into these figures because I'm really excited. 
Okay, so turning to articulation, all of the articulation is the same for every Dalek, so I won't be covering articulation for the other History of the Dalek sets. The dome can do a full 360, although it is quite stiff on some Daleks and quite loose on some others. The eye stalk can go down, which is nice. I've noticed the eye stalks have been able to go a lot further down than they used to be able to, and it can go up and right the way back. There are ball joints at each plunger and gun so you can rotate those all the way around if you want to and every Dalek has a spinny wheel and two standard wheels at the base so you can move forward back or any direction that you wish to and yeah the articulation is quite standard but it's all a Dalek really needs so the articulation is the same on all Daleks the only difference is purely cosmetic you know like paint jobs maybe different shaped guns or arms or eyes but essentially it is exactly the same figure with all of them so this is the only time I will be covering articulation on the Daleks so here we have the transparent Dalek and it is exactly as it says on the tin it is just a standard Dalek drone but completely in transparent plastic. It has all of the standard articulation of a Dalek. However, I have noticed that the joints are a lot smoother. This could be due to the transparent plastic, but it's awesome. You can see all of the workings and the connectors joints inside and even the numbers, which is quite funny. And you can even see all the detail. Some of the detail is harder to spot because it, ins it is trans translucent, but you can see the neck grating as well as the grating around the slats. Very, very cool. In terms of displaying this Dalek on the shelf, I'm not really too sure if I would display this Dalek or not, but it's a nice little novelty to have on the side, and I'm really, really happy that character made it. So next up, taking a look at the Dalek, which I think most people are getting this set for, and that is the re-release of the original Planet Supreme Dalek that came out way back in 2008, I think it was, way back with the original Dalek Collector set number one. So this is a long-awaited re-release for this figure, and has it been worth the wait? Well, let's take a look. Okay, so taking a look at the Dalek Supreme, or really the head of the Supreme Council, this is a very, very beautiful Dalek. I mean, look at this. You've got this really, really nice shiny metallic gold on this really wonderful gloss black, and honestly, it's just a sight to behold. You've got the purple dome lights, the um, jam jar lights, which I really, really love. You have this torch eye stalk which as you can see even does look like a torch it's very very cool but is this a worthy replacement to the original well here's the original now in terms of accuracy to what we actually see on screen i'm gonna have to say that the original is the better of the two simply because i do believe that the gold is more accurate and i also like that the jam jar dome lights have been given a silver base whereas here sadly they are just the purple plastic which is a bit of a shame but that's only a little gripe but i think ultimately for me this original gold just looks far more accurate to what we see and i also think the original eye stalk is much more accurate as well as you can see the red is actually on the inside whereas on this one it has just been painted around the front also you can see that white has been used on the on the eye which is more accurate on this eye it's silver so that is a shame uh, a big difference you'll notice is this supreme dalek does have the updated slats whereas this one has the original ones that were a lot thinner i am going to be completely honest i am loving this new sculpt for the slats i just think it makes them much more noticeable it makes them stand out a bit more and i'm really really liking it because of that now another noticeable difference is this dalek has the oval shape and this Dalek doesn't it's completely smooth and I believe that is more accurate so at the end of the day 
if you haven't got this original figure, this is a very, very nice substitute. Like I say, it's an amazing Dalek. I don't want to slag it off at all. But I just feel as though, in terms of accuracy for me, this original one is still my preferred one. But as you can see, there has been some obvious damage over the years. I've had this since I was a kid and I accidentally snapped off uh, the light and I lost it. I wasn't able to find it. So when I heard this guy could be potentially getting a re-release, I got really excited. But I think what I'm going to have to do is try and track down another one of these to replace him but you know with this dalek aside this is still a very very nice dalek and as you can see in this lighting it just it lights up this dalek's all about the bling it really does go out of its way to look just that little bit more glamorous shall we say so putting in the invisible dalek with him i honestly think this is one of the more cooler Dalek sets that we've gotten over the years and this is definitely one that a lot of people are going to want. So moving on now to the Death to the Dalek set and unfortunately this one has been a bit of a letdown for reasons I think many of you will know why. The midsections have only been half painted. Now, look, I know Aljuar has come out and said sometimes things happen at the factory but this is ridiculous, you know, I have wanted Death Daleks for such a long time, I finally get an opportunity to have them, and then this happens. I mean, you know, it's not unfixable, I am going to try and, you know, take these apart and actually paint them myself like many people have, but for now, they are just unfortunately not going to look 100% right. However, I've had them for a while now, and I can honestly say they are amazing Daleks. I really, really love them. In fact, I was a little upset I was never able to get hold of another one of these sets because I did want to swap the guns around and have four Death Daleks, but due to scalpers and hoarders, which there are many about nowadays, uh, sadly, that hasn't been able to happen. I mean, we don't know. I might be able to come across another one. The stock seems to be all over the place this year, uh, which we'll get onto a bit later. But for now, I'm really, really happy with these two Daleks. So the fundamental differences between the two are quite obvious. This Dalek has the standard gun, and this Dalek has the machine gun, which is awesome. This Dalek has orange, well, more yellowy dome lights on this release, and this Dalek has the clear, transparent lights. Aside from that, they are exactly the same. Oh, beg your pardon. Uh, this Dalek also doesn't have the oval shape, whereas this Dalek does. So, yeah. And now I'm certain. Aside from that, there is absolutely no difference between them. But it's enough difference, I think. It's enough to still keep both of them interesting. So this is a re-release of the Dalek that came with the Death to the Daleks Third Doctor. And this is a re-release of the Death Dalek that came in the sound effects wave. Obviously with the only difference being that it doesn't have the overall. So just like the supreme dalek in the planet wave it do, in the planet set it does have the updated slats which is really nice and unfortunately like both original releases of the, these figures the guns are both silver which is incorrect and i can't understand why character didn't take this opportunity to fix that problem but like i say it <sighs> It's easy to sit here and complain about them, but the truth of the matter is, these are two very, very nice Daleks, and I'm very happy to have them. That's really all I can say about it. I was getting so fed up of 60s Daleks, so I'm really starting to enjoy these 70s ones. And like I say, this is a very unique design. We only ever saw this once. So I have to say... I'm very happy with them, despite the few problems that they have. I would say these past two Dalek sets have been the best we've had in a long time. So here we have all of the figures that have come out in Wave 1 for this year. A very nice wave, nothing too much to really say about it. Like I said, if you are someone who owns all of the original versions of these figures, 
this wave isn't essential for you, but you can still army build some very nice Daleks, and you do get some very nice updated and improved, in my opinion, versions of the Eighth Doctors. And as someone who missed out on these Death Daleks, this Eighth Doctor and desperately needs a replace for this Dalek. The inclusion of the invisible Dalek is really nice as well, so overall I'm very happy with this wave, but in my opinion, the best is yet to come. Well, if it will just focus for me. Halt. Turn. Right. Halt. Now. Exterminate. It's just a bit strange, to be honest. <laughs>